Welcome to my master guide for Pokemon Sleep. If you haven't seen my beginner or my advanced guide yet, I will link those in the description. But maybe you've been playing for a long time or maybe you're just starting out in the game and you want to be super informed. So let's get into some more Pokemon Sleep tips and tricks. Firstly, on Sunday, the last day of the week for your Snorlax, your pot size will actually double. So that means you can start to make some of those dishes that require a lot of ingredients. And using a good camp ticket, which increases the size of your pot, will mean that the doubling is even more effective. But even even better, even though this isn't 100% confirmed yet, it seems very, very likely that on Sunday you have an extra chance for your meal to be extra tasty. So that means you can really plan to have some big meals for your Snorlax on Sunday to get those last minute rank ups. Next, I have three infographics for you that cover the scaling of dishes. Generally, a dish that has more ingredients or rarer ingredients are worth more points, and as they scale through the levels, they get more and more points added to them, but that's not always the case. Surprisingly, there are a few meals that don't require too too many ingredients that actually scale very very well as it levels up so it's important to know this because they're the ones you may want to focus on so screenshot these infographics here to use them for your meals off the back of scaling dishes do not ever do mixed dishes you know how sometimes when you just throw random ingredients in or you auto cook it doesn't mean there's certain ingredients to make a set meal so it does a mixed curry or a mixed drink or a mixed salad yeah these are terrible they do not scale at all and are terrible for long-term progression i mean if it's 5 59 p.m and and you haven't given your Snorlax lunch, yeah, just chuck a few things in and make a quick dish because it's better than nothing at all. But ideally, you never want to do this. So please, no more mixed dishes. Something that took me way too long to realize was that the ingredients the Pokemon drop at level 30 and 60 can vary between species. So for example, all Diglets and Doug Trios drop tomato, but at level 30 and 60, they drop different ingredients from a specific pool. So I have one Doug Trio and three Diglets. As you can see, my Doug Trio drops tomato, leek, tomato. My first Diglet drops tomato, Tomato, leek, soybeans. My second diglet is tomato, leek, soybeans again. And then my third diglet is old tomato. So depending on the kind of meals that I want to make, I might want to choose a specific diglet or dug trio in my team. So if I'm making a meal that has a lot of tomatoes, then I'm definitely going to prefer this diglet over some of the other ones. Or maybe I want to invest in a diglet dropping leek because leek is a rare ingredient, so I might want to favor this one instead, if they were all leveled up really high. Main skill seeds and sub skill seeds are items that are really important that you get throughout the game by completing achievements or by buying them in the premium exchange shop. But did you know that sub skill seeds can only benefit a skill that you've already unlocked? So as an example, if you have a level 15 Pokemon and you use a sub skill seed, it can only boost that level 10 sub skill. So picture this scenario, you find an awesome shiny Pokemon, you want to invest all your time, effort, candies and seeds into this Pokemon. You might want to think about the order that you do this instead of putting all your candy into it at once you might want to do a bit of candy to get it to level 10 or to level 25 then use your sub skill seed if that's the one that you want to improve and then you might want to continue using the candy after that so you have a bit of control over which sub skill is boosted rather than it being random but something to also keep in mind that if you have a sub skill that is gold it cannot be improved anymore that is the maximum in my advanced sleep guide i spoke about how luck incense is the best used at the end of the week because that's when you're going to get the most dream shards but there are a few other incenses that are also better used at the end of the week so a focus incense is best used on a Sunday because at the end of the week your Snorlax is stronger, you're going to get better sleep styles and that means you're going to get more experience at the end of the week. And then your focus incense is doubling even more so you're getting the most out of it. A friend incense is also best used on maybe a Saturday or a Sunday because again that's when your Snorlax is the biggest so you're going to be unlocking rarer and evolved Pokemon then and you want those Pokemon that come to your party to be hungry so a friend incense is going to increase the chance of one of those Pokemon being hungry and going to make it easier for you to catch. Good thing you you can use two incenses at once. On the topic of incenses, sometimes I get questions about why some incenses can't be used. So as you can see here, this Pichu incense is grayed out and it is unusable. And that's because this trainer is at Cyan Beach and Pichu doesn't spawn at Cyan Beach. Although Pikachu does. So that means you can't spawn a Pichu where it doesn't exist. So if you want to use this particular incense or any incense that is grayed out, you have to go to a different location. I don't know why they don't say this in the game, but here's the specific amounts that you get for your handy candies and for your ingredient tickets. Because you want to make sure you don't end up with 186 Caterpie candy and waste your handy candies. Handy candy S is 3 candy, M is 20 candies, and L is 100 candies. Ingredient ticket S is 10, M is 30, and L we don't actually know yet. A lot of people want to know the best Pokemon to use in this game, and I've seen a lot of tier lists out there, and some I agree with, but some that I don't. It's hard to make a tier list when there's lots of different ways to play this game. 
game and there's lots of different Pokemon that are really good in specific scenarios. But I will show you this tier list here which shows you the viability of Pokemon in the long term because you may use specific Pokemon now but at least in the back of your mind you want to think about long term. This game is a marathon. You want to think about how you invest in your time, your energy and your candy. So I think this tier list is particularly useful and for the most part I agree with a lot of it. I will also link in the description the Reddit post that goes through this tier list and also the explanation of why this person chose the particular mod in a specific tier. So I think that is really useful as well. So for example, Gengar is at the top of a lot of tier lists because it's a really good Pokemon and very speedy. And I've seen a lot of tier lists that put Pseudo Widow really high, but Pseudo Widow does kind of taper off towards the late game a little bit. So there's some interesting information here to check out. This will also help you a lot with which evolution you may want to get because Eevee is a very difficult Pokemon to play with and has a lot of options. But at the end of the day, play the game how you want to. Use the Pokemon that you like, use the shiny Pokemon that you get. Tier lists like this is just if you really want to min max it as much as possible. But you want to make sure that you have fun with the game too. I hope you enjoyed these tips guys and if you did make sure you subscribe for more Pokemon content and check out my other Pokemon sleep guides as well.